Yes, and welcome back on our second session on the Touchline Y254. Of course, it's all about sports, and as promised earlier, we have pleased to have the national under 16 three on three men's basketball team with me here to talk about uh, their achievements in Dakar, Senegal. They take part in the annual tournament that's just part of the celebrations uh, to mark two years to the Youth Olympics. For the first time ever, the Olympic Games will be held in Africa, but that's the Youth Games in 2026 in Dakar. They did good, give account of themselves and to present to the whole world just who they are. How long? will their good performances or good form last. And with me on set, I'm joined with Zedekia Otieno, the head coach who was in charge of this particular team. Karibu sana, Zedi. Thank you very much. Yes, and of course, and the captain, Gabriel Munyao. Yes, thank and you. And of course, the shooting guard, Kennedy Ireri, on my you. far right. Thank yes, you. and uh, maybe, coach, what was the main motivation for this good performance in um, Dakar? Uh, first and foremost, let me take time and congratulate the amputee team for work well done uh, in the World Cup because they're an inspiration that disability is not an ability. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did as well. Mm -hmm. You have a link to them? I don't have a link to them, mm -hmm. but <laughs> they were here before us and uh -huh, sure. we, we really congratulate them for that. Mm -hmm. uh, for ourselves, I think um, it has been a, a two year journey mm -hmm. uh, because we started fighting for development mm -hmm. uh, for the last two years and uh, for the last few years we have tried to put in structures mm -hmm. so that uh, we are able to compete remember uh, for the last eight years mm -hmm. we had not competed in any activity youth, uh -huh. youth activity mm -hmm. when it comes to basketball but this year alone we have already done three because mm -hmm. we started with the under 18 in kampala yes. then we did under 16 in tanzania mm -hmm. and now we are with the 3x3 mm -hmm. uh, in senegal so we have been doing scouting all over the country. We have been trying to create a database mm -hmm. for the young players in the country. Mm -hmm. So putting up this team was not a struggle. It was not a stretch because uh, these are kids that we had already scouted. Mm -hmm. We had already used them uh, for the U18 and the U16. Mm -hmm. And they're already in the database. So when the invitation came, mm -hmm. we just went into the database and just selected the kids that had passports. That is one thing we're still struggling with in terms of documentation mm -hmm. so these are the kids that were ready in terms of having passport because if, for you to go to Senegal you need to have passports mm -hmm. so we called them into camp mm -hmm. uh, we had only two weeks to prepare and uh, it was a very collective effort mm -hmm. uh, from the Kenya Basketball Federation their parents dropping them picking them every single day and also um, me myself in terms of just creating a flexible schedule because remember they're still in school even mm -hmm. this week when they're back they're still <laughs> doing the exams and everything. When they were in Senegal, they were on their books all the time because they still had to come back and do their studies. So I think the plan that we put into place, that was the roadmap or that was the connecting glue in terms of how we performed in Senegal. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, Gabriel, you were the captain of the team. Was this the result that the team wanted? Um, of course, going into Senegal, we always wanted to reach the top. Mm -hmm. But since the short period of time we were given, I know and we saw that we did our best and we got the third position. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what would you say that what was inspired the team to get to this point because you left a mark in Dakar? Yeah, from the onset we knew we were the smallest guys. We knew how to make a mark for Kenya, for East Africa, for our region. Mm -hmm. We knew what you had to do as Kenyans representing the country. As our coach said, it's been a very long time since youth was represented in Ke by Kenya. Mm -hmm. So we knew what you had to do entering the tournament and we left our marks from game one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now you, you, you're like the team that's benefiting from what I know Akina Zedi have been fighting for maybe for a very long time. Mm -hmm. does, how does that make you feel what, and want to achieve? Um, it makes me feel wonderful for the timing. You know, he said it's taken two years. That means there are people who have grown over 16 years old who haven't gotten the opportunity. Mm -hmm. But we have been able to get that opportunity in the perfect time, mm -hmm. the perfect setting, mm -hmm. and been able to represent our country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ireri, um, what, what was your experience in this particular tournament in Dakar? I mean, it was my first insight into West African players. I never played against West African players, and I'd say the competition is really high. Mm -hmm. um, from the get-go, when I got in, they, the way they play defense is way different. They play defense harder. They, they 
look for the ball harder and they fight for the ball harder. It was mm -hmm. a lot and it was a good experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think made Kenya cut? But what made Kenya like uh, put up such a uh, good, good performance? I think it was a collective effort uh, from all of our teammates. We were all able to score points, rebound, assist, uh, have good defensive stops. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I feel like that really put us mm -hmm. above most of the, the team that we uh, mm -hmm. beat. Mm -hmm. Yes, and for, for you, uh, Coach Zedi, maybe for you to have the database of these players, how important was that? Uh, it's very, very important because um, as a federation, mm -hmm. that is like your blueprint because you see now these kids can eventually grow to be the senior Morans mm -hmm. because now the junior Morans, they're in their 16, gradually graduate to U18, then U21. Mm -hmm then U23, and that is already senior level. So it's very, very critical, and um, we are not only doing it locally. Mm -hmm. We are also trying to connect uh, with, with players uh, all over the world who are Kenyans mm -hmm. to just try bring them in and just trying to make sure that they are in the system. Mm -hmm. Because remember, uh, next year, mm -hmm. uh, we are soon starting our preparation uh, towards the U16 Championship Zone 5 next year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need a bigger pool of players mm -hmm. to select from, mm -hmm. uh, to choose. Uh, the ones who are there already provides mm -hmm. a very good experience mm -hmm. and, and, and exposure mm -hmm. because you already inculcated a culture mm -hmm. that we need at the national team level. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say I'm very, very grateful uh, for these young, amazing men. Mm -hmm. uh, I know uh, it has not been easy um, waking up early, uh, going back home tired, and uh, they have been very, very supportive and, and, and cooperative. And uh, that is why uh, we were able to get to where we, uh, we got mm -hmm. in terms of performance. But I think um, we'll have done better. Mm -hmm. We'll have come back with the gold mm -hmm. uh, or the silver. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the team that ended up winning uh, the tournament, Senegal, mm -hmm. we lost to Senegal by half a basket. Mm -hmm. And it was a technical mistake from, from, uh, from the referees. They were awarded two free throws in the last minute which they were not supposed to be awarded. Mm -hmm. So it means we'll have won that game. Mm -hmm. uh, against Algeria, remember, in 3x3, we have never beaten Algeria before. And uh, they were very, very confident mm -hmm. of beating us, mm -hmm. but uh, they beat us in overtime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they beat us in overtime. But now, when it comes now to the gold medal bracket, mm -hmm. uh, we had learned mm -hmm. uh, their tactics and everything. And also during our preparation, mm -hmm. That is the only team mm -hmm. we kept on watching mm -hmm. because they have one of the best setup when it comes to 3x3. Mm -hmm. So we kept on watching some of the games and even some of our plays and systems mm -hmm. were based on their mm -hmm. uh, movement and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we were able to counter some of them. Uh, we were able to adapt others and we were able to like, have good performance because 3x3 is more skill-based. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you for a fact, uh, these players seated here, mm -hmm. they're highly skilled. And uh, even we had... Um, very, very good uh, feedback mm -hmm. uh, from the NBA Academy mm -hmm. scouts mm -hmm. in terms of our ball movement, floor spacing, in terms of our shooting. Mm -hmm. Because I think that is also one thing mm -hmm. that even sets us uh, mm -hmm. apart from the rest. Because against Senegal, mm -hmm. we had like four three points. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, against Algeria, mm -hmm. we had like three. Mm -hmm. You see, and in 3x3, uh, shooting three points or having players who can shoot mm -hmm. makes a very, very big mm -hmm. difference. Mm -hmm. And of course, when, um, when you get to the data, are you, do you get a surprise with the amount of talent that you find out there? Yes, uh, there is immense talent in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the team that has, is just from here, the Amputee team, mm -hmm. They have only been in camp for a month. Mm -hmm. And look at, they've gone to the World See, Cup, yeah, they've finished, finished fourth. fourth. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with all these other sports. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, mm -hmm. there's a kid, mm -hmm. look at the Gen Z Goliath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is a kid that was somewhere in Western Kenya. Yeah, that's, that's a talent. A tal that's talent, mm -hmm. you see. So there's a bigger pool. In um, basketball, that is. <laughs> 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 yes, in basketball, not yeah. in the streets. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um, that is why um, we are trying to push the federation so that we can have like regular and annual structures, mm -hmm. whereby even if you're not putting up camps, but you're putting up uh, systems of how to scout, mm -hmm. what type of players do you want, how do you work with them remotely. They don't need to come to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. We can identify a coach in Western province, identify five, six kids, and that coach works with them. Mm -hmm. We can identify the same in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. We can identify the same in Mombasa, in Makueni, in Kitui. And so that when we call like a big, uh, annual camp or a camp, mm -hmm. then 
we have all these players in our database and it's easy mm -hmm. to narrow it down to a team that can go represent Kenya well. Mm -hmm. Now, Gabriel, uh, for the next session, what now what lies ahead? What lies ahead is you now to go even beyond. Uh, maybe you're ready for that now? Um, like I said, we set our mark as Kenyan youth and we know the next time we're going out, we have to represent mm -hmm. Kenya the same or even better. Mm -hmm. The goal is always to represent Kenya, reaching gold, reaching silver, getting higher mm -hmm. than we have right now. Mm -hmm. So the goal right now is to work harder, and maybe the next time we meet, we might even get gold. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, and so maybe for Ireri, what, what did you learn from this tournament? Um, you need to work hard. There's always people working harder than you, mm -hmm. and you always have to match that. Mm -hmm. And, and Gabi talked about um, the rest of the team, the rest of the teams there, uh, maybe looking at you and, you know, the East Africans are somehow uh, smaller in size and all that, but what really made you, like, mentally to, to, to come together and, and just do your thing as a team? I mean, for us, um, I had gone in nervous into the game, but I had a good game against Senegal. That really put my, um, I was really focused from there on. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of confidence and... From there on, yeah, we had a lot of confidence after that. Uh -huh. What did basketball come to you as a first choice? Um, I always did start playing basketball. I started playing basketball in like 2022. Uh -huh. It wasn't always a sport I'd play. I first played football in the beginning, uh -huh. but now that I've learned and uh -huh. played basketball uh -huh. at an international level, uh -huh. for sure it's a first pick. Yeah, and, and with this this just a pathway to Olympics, that means that uh, the possibility for LA 2028, if you know this team is kept in touch, in, yeah. intact, we can get to the qualifiers and make the ticket for the first time. Yeah. I mean, is that what you see? I mean, as long as we work hard for it and we put our mind on to it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, Gabriel, this, of course, is a ticket to the Olympics, right? Yeah. I mean, what, what, what a task awaits now? Um, of course, as Kenyans, we know we have to represent our country. Mm -hmm. Going into the Olympics for the first time as youth, we know the objectives you have to do. We've already been given a small sample mm -hmm. from the Dakar tournament. Mm -hmm. We know the teams are going to be facing. They, they are bigger in size. They might be bigger in size. They might be better than us. But what we do as a team collectively, mm -hmm. that helps us get those wins together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so for the qualifiers next, um, that's coming up, uh, I mean, it's like you know, have you have a blueprint for what to do? Yeah, of course. Now we have been given the teams that we've been we're going to play against. Even though there are other teams, we have that small experience of what it is to play in a three, three x three tournament. Uh -huh. We know the areas we need to improve on as a team, as individuals, our strengths, and we need to keep working on them towards the qualifier, mm -hmm. so that we can be able to represent our country at the best level we can. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just as we wind up, are you ready for you? That definitely represented the Kenyan colors. How proud are you? Um, immensely proud. It's the first time I've uh, represented Kenya uh -huh. in international sport, and it was really a good blessing, and I enjoyed it a lot. Uh -huh. Yes, and huge task ready for you. Uh, 2026 Youth Olympics, uh, this is achievable, and Kenya can qualify. It is achievable. Yes. Uh, all you're asking for is the, the support uh, from Kenya Basketball Federation, uh, uh, the Olympic Committee mm -hmm. of Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, all other stakeholders that are outside there who are basketball lovers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's time that we put Kenya to the map. So they need to come on board and let's ride this boat. Mm -hmm. And maybe just quickly uh, before we go, how important was it for um, the IOC to organize this particular tournament, um, this particular event here where over nine, you know, hundreds of youths came together, just celebration ahead uh, of the Olympics here? Yeah. It is very crucial mm -hmm. because this was like an ironing tournament whereby they were checking if everything is working uh, from transportation, accommodation, food, uh, entertainment, mm -hmm. uh, the technical aspect of the game in terms of referees and everything. So it's very, very important. It means by the time it gets to 2028, uh, when you get back to Dakar, because I'm very, very confident of us getting back to Dakar, mm -hmm. uh, everything will be set mm -hmm. and we'll be ready for that stage. Yes, indeed. And this, the team of four will be the one that will be there, right? Uh, uh, you don't, like to you don't, you don't, you don't change a winning team. No, you nice keep one. a winning team uh -huh. and we have seen coaches do that over mm -hmm. and over. But if one or two slack and mm -hmm. we can get a piece somewhere that can make us get better, mm -hmm. we'll do it. we we'll definitely mm -hmm. do it. Mm -hmm. And for um, Gabriel Lireri, that particular bronze medal, who you, to, 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 who you want to dedicate it to? Gabriel. 
um, of course, my family, my coach, my club that I play for. I've been working hard to improve myself, uh -huh. and I knew that going out there, I have to represent them well. Even if I'm representing Kenya, mm -hmm. I know that those personal supporters that are always looking out for me. Mm -hmm. So I dedicate my medal to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which club do you play for? Um, I play for Vikapu Academy. Uh -huh. Vikapu Academy, yes. right? And for Ireri? Um, at first, I'd like to dedicate to God. He's the one that pushed us to uh, get this medal. Second, my family. And third, my coaches. Yes. And see you in Dakar 2026, Zedi. Sure. The team. Sure. Yeah, it's possible. We've been talking to the men's under 16 basket, three on three basketball team. Of course, we have another batch of uh, the players and, of course, uh, the unofficial from the federation. They'll be coming up shortly. But thank you, uh, Ireri, as well as uh, Gabriel and Zedi for gracing the touchline. So stay with us. We're coming up next with another session of the interview on the touchline.